and this week, there's going to be both going on. Be, but all the natural things are only going to be uh, indicative of what God is doing in the spirit. It's going to be an awesome time. We're going to eat, eat, eat. And uh, we're going to drink, drink, drink. And we're going to gather, gather, gather. We're going to pray, 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 and worship, worship, worship. Have fun. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing like the fellowship of the people of God in the same room together. Okay. Wake up. Are y'all here? Okay. Just checking. All right. So this week is going to be an awesome week. Friday night starts our When Women Gather event, and it's going to be awesome. If you haven't signed up, please go sign up. If you don't have the money, just sign up anyway. God will help you and help us. It, we never stop because of lack of money in this house. God's going to provide whatever is needed. But I'm just asking all of you to ask friends. I'm telling you, they'll come. They will come if you ask them. We've got uh, some wonderful people coming to minister prophetically, and you're going to have special ministry. There's uh, young people, for the youth, all of our youth, there's going to be the younger ones and the older ones, special people that are going to be coming in to minister to them. Then there is, uh, we're going to have some guest speakers that are going to absolutely preach the house on fire. It's going to be an awesome time. You know, people like uh, Pastor Lindsay, Pastor Christine are going to be with us. It's going to be, a, and uh, yeah, did you know that? Did I, did you know that, John Damon? Did I get, you just found out? I'm sorry. Okay. That might have supposed to have been a surprise. I don't know. She, she may, no, you knew, you knew. Okay. And then we've got our Hispanic counterpart that's here on Saturday night. By the way, I, I love the Hispanic community so much. I'm just so excited about what God is doing among them now. In our church in Sugar Land, there we have the uh, sister church of the church that meets here on Saturday night meets in Sugar Land on Saturday night. And Pastor Randon called me last week, and I didn't get a word in for 30 minutes, and I promise you I'm not exaggerating. He was so fired up. He said, Mom, these people, he said they're not letting COVID stop them. It's not that they don't care or they don't respect the rules, but he said they're ready to have church, and God is showing up. They came in there on a Saturday night. Over 1,100 people had, were from wall to wall in there. 127 got baptized in the Spirit. I mean, just first-time salvation, just moving. God is moving because people are hungry for Jesus. And I, um, I, so that's going to happen this weekend. That church is coming to join with us. Many of those women will be here, along with some of our precious ladies from Lake Charles who have gone through hard times in Louisiana. We're sponsoring them to come in and be a part. Please don't miss it. This is your opportunity, okay? Sign up. Let us know because we can't order the food unless we know. I know that we're bad about waiting until the last minute, but at least let us know if you're coming. You can pay at the last minute, but let us know so we can make plans. And we'll see you here this weekend. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm just going to share. It's a little bit different than what I normally do. Uh, I'm very much a um, revelation, and I love things in the Word and digging things out of the Word that possibly you've never seen it like that before. I'm not sure that anything I'm going to say today you haven't already seen and heard. However, I am just trusting the power of the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and uh, give us exactly what we need. I'm going to be talking to you from uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter, so go ahead and turn there in the Word. But let me just say to those watching online, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for all of our guests that are here today. This is a great place to be, and if you're our guest here uh, and you want to know more about us, we're glad to be vulnerable to you and let you know what God is doing here at Triumph Church. For those that are watching online, we hope you get your word, gather around, gather your family around, and let's study what the word has to say. 
Also, in your giving, I pray that your habit is good and you have not neglected that. You can go online. You can give uh, according to the text that um, is on your screen. You can go to our website. All of those are safe places. Those that are here can give in the giving boxes. And uh, you can always send it in by snail mail, and we'll get it eventually. Thank you, Jesus. But um, thank you for being wonderful givers to this house. We love you, and thank you for joining us. Let's give our online audience a hand this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to read the word to you, and um, I, I don't know if this is a disclaimer or not. Maybe it's you're going to hear the, the mothering side of me today. I, I know I have a very strong mercy gift. And so I'm, I am uh, I'm apt to, when I say something that might be a little strong, I want to immediately balance it with something really soft. Do you, does anybody know about that? If you're, you know what I'm talking about? Well... I don't know how much time that I will be able to balance every word I say today. So I'm just going to ask you, even those watching online, I hope you hear my heart. And I would ask you not to put on Facebook everything I say today because you may not have the balancing uh, scripture or you may not have the balancing part of the sentence or the, you may not hear my heart. And I want that to happen today. Uh, I haven't said much about what I'm about to say. I've been very quiet because I'm always, you know, no matter what, it's, it's mercy, mercy, mercy. But today I really have this so strong and so deep in me. I want to know a way forward from here. And I think that's an operative word is moving forward. The word is moving. We've got to stay in motion. We can't be still. There's energy that is released when we're in motion. And I am believing that that is where we are today. And I, I want to know, I, I understand we're a divided nation. I understand, uh, I don't agree with it, but I understand that that's where we are. And we have never needed a united church of the living God more than we need it right now. We are not blue or red right now in this place we are red black white orange brown we're all peoples coming together under one banner and one blood which is the blood of Jesus Christ amen and uh, so my allegiance today is not to a party my allegiance is not to just a president my allegiance is to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My hope is in him. They sang that song a while ago about my hope being in that. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. I dare not trust even the sweetest sounding frame, but I wholly lean on the one true living God whose name is Jesus Christ. That is where I'm at today. I, uh, we have the ability, we have the power to reproduce, to reproduce or, or either resist the dominant forces that are in our culture right now. We can reproduce them and stir them up and make them what others are making them. Or we can resist that and do what the Word says. So I'm going to read the Word to you. And we're going to kind of uh, just take it and unpackage it and see what the Word says. I'm going to stay on one particular text today only from uh, Hebrews the 10th chapter, if they'll put that up. The 19th verse, therefore, brethren and sister, say sisters, brothers and sisters. Now, I, I need to stop right there because uh, I, I know that's an old term. I know that's an old world term and probably an um, old style and um, probably 
my day and beyond and my mom and dad's day we kind of got out of it i'm still calling my mother-in-law sister clark in the word of god however just to back up what I'm doing, it may be old school, but the, it's the closest bond in Jesus' time. In the, in the New Testament, uh, it was a familial. It, it represented a family when they called everyone brothers and sisters over a hundred times in the New Testament. The church is called brothers and sisters. Yeah, we used to sing this song. Um, uh, you say, let's see, how did we say it? I, I, I forgot the words. I think it says, you will notice we say brother and sister around here. Y'all remember that? It's because we're a family. Well, hang on. And these folks are so dear. When one has a problem, we all share the load. As we all join together in the family of God. Isn't that just an awesome song? I can tell y'all loved it so much. Well, I'll sing another one. This is how we do it. <laughs> See, it's a little natural and a little spiritual coming together, and we are redeeming all of those songs. So this is how we do it around here. It's part of the family. And the, and the word says, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened up for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, yes, 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 then, okay, there are three things I want you to see real quickly. Let us draw near, underline that, with a true heart. That's a transparent heart. Truth is the only thing that sets us free. The truth you know and embrace and activate in your life. With a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, second thing, underline, hold fast. Let us, first of all, he said, and since we have a great high priest, let us draw near. Let us Hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us, the third one, consider how to stir up, oh my goodness, one another to good works. I'm sorry, this is not working. Uh, not neglecting. Now, the 25th verse is the one we will end with because it's what gives you the how to all of the ones uh, that I've just read. By not neglecting to meet together, as is the ha habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day coming. I listen to this in the Amplified. Not forsaking or neglecting. There's a forsaking and a neglecting to assemble together as believers, as is the habit of some, but admonishing, warning, urging, and encouraging one another. And all the more, do it more. Meet together more as faithfully as you see the day approaching. Do you think for one second that Jesus didn't know COVID might be coming out? He absolutely did. He absolutely did. He has seen every place. I can't do that anymore. Um, he has seen... Everything that we have gone through, he's seen everything that we are going through and that we may go through, he saw ahead in time. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows we're in COVID. He knows the, every case. He knows um, what is going to happen next. He has already given us and equipped us for such a time as now. So, I want to take the, the scripture and begin in this first, let us, there are three things, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So the first thing he says is, let us draw near. Now, there is a promise that we all know. If we draw near to him, he will 
draw near to us. There's never been a time that you needed to draw near to God than today. To establish his presence in your life in every single way. It's not a time to shrink back. It's not a time for apathy. It's not a time for boredom. It's not a time for laziness. But it is a time to draw near. But I can do that at home. I know you can. I'm very well aware of that. I have done that so often, and I accept that. I know. Let me just start with draw near. No matter where you are, learn to draw near to God. It's his presence. Here's something that I've learned this week. You know, the pr- we've talked about the presence of God our whole lives, your whole uh, spiritual lives. We've talked about the presence of God. In the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. In, the, in his presence, there is so many things available to you. There's healing. There's joy. There's all the things that we need. So it's indicative. I mean, it just you would think everybody wants to draw near to him and be in his presence. But coming with that drawing near and being in his presence. His presence is also enlightening. His presence is a light, and it shines in dark places. So it reveals things about ourselves sometimes we don't want revealed. Um, So I I realize that in drawing near, it may be a double-edged sword at times. But if you will just take my word for it, that the awesomeness of God, even in the revealing of what is inside of us, is so much greater and so faith-filled and so grace-filled and so empowering that it overshadows anything negative that you might feel like would come to light in that situation. So our heart and our admonition is let us draw near, not just one, but all of us, say us. Let us draw near. Then the next thing, I love this one, because it says in the 23rd verse, let us hold fast, not let go. Now, there have been times we won't let go. There have been times we've wanted to run naked in the street. I'm just saying. There have been a few times we've wanted to do some crazy stuff, and we won't let go of stuff and just go off somewhere and just do our own thing. Just let it go. Don't let go of this. Hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without wavering. Do not go back and forth wavering. One minute you're with, one minute you're not. The Word of God says, hold fast. We used to sing a song, hold to God's unchanging hand. Because the times around us and the, and the world is always up and down. And there's so many things changing. There's swift transitions taking place. But God's always faithful and he's always there no matter what. No matter if you've got COVID. No matter if you don't have COVID. No matter if we're living in that season and you can't go back to work and your kids are driving you crazy. You better hold on to God's unchanging hand. I'm just saying let us hold fast to the hope, not hold fast to the political party that we like, or hold fast to the empire, or hold fast to something that has been a source for us, or hold fast to all medical knowledge. We better hold fast to God's unchanging hand and to the confession of our hope without wavering because he is faithful. He split the sea so I could walk right through it. I am a child of God because of what he did, because of him. And he went through the mercy seat and poured his blood out and made atonement for each of us so that we could hold fast to that. Lord, help us to remember what we need to remember and forget what we need to forget. Lord, help us to remember what we need to remember and forget what we need to forget. And understand you are going to make it. Say, I'm going to make it. Here's the thing that I have watched over and over. People make permanent decisions in a very temporary circumstance. Your circumstance will change, but the hand you hold will not change. 
if you hold on to his unwavering hope and faith in him, we're going to make it. And then it says, let us consider, I love this one, how to stir up, say stir up, one another to anger and divisiveness. No, excuse me, to love and good works. Well, I'm a stir. I am a natural stir because I have to make pots and pots and pans and gumbos and soups and stews and spaghettis and all, on a regular basis. I don't know where people come from, but they come to my house and they eat. And I have made more gumbo in the last, well, since COVID started than I have in a lifetime. I have washed more dishes. I've made more meals, just saying. So I have this stirring thing in my head, and I understand a little bit better by what I've done in the natural about stirring up because I understand that I call, we call them pockets of seasoning, big pockets of seasoning, and you can throw it in there, and if you don't stir it up, oh my Jesus, have you ever bitten down on a pocket of seasoning that was so potent? Oh, you can't, you, get, you can't get to the sink quick enough to get it out. And you're washing your mouth and gargling and doing everything because you can't take it. We've got some potent, wonderful seasoning in this house. We've got some gifts in this house that are so powerful. But we got to stir them up because we need everybody in the pot. We need everybody stirred up. And here's what I found is that, you know, I can stir those pockets up and it balances it out and then just let it stew a little bit and let it simmer and let the heat get up under it a little bit more. Yeah, heat is supposed to get us on the same page. It has a way about doing that. And then you stir it up. But here's what is crazy is have you ever walked away and didn't keep on stirring? And then you came and you stirred it up from the bottom. Down there, you know, you dug up things you weren't supposed to dig up. And you made a mess out of it because everything in the pot tasted burned. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Every one of you know it. And that's what we do in the natural. We're going to, we're supposed to stir up to love, but oh, we're going to dig down deep until, oh my, you, nobody can tell you. That's God's place to dig, not yours, if he wants it dug up. But the truth is, that's not activating what needs to be activated. The thing is, we're supposed to stir up to love we're supposed to good works because when we get through, it's supposed to be good works. It's supposed to give us activation. It's supposed to give us energy. It's supposed to give us strength in a hard time. But no, we're going to dig down until everything is scorched and everything tastes. But God is going to help us. Amen? Stir up one another. And then let's get to this last point because this is a quick message today, but it's going to be good. Okay, the last is this. In the 24th, uh, 25th verse, it says, not neglecting or forsaking to meet together. So all of this that he's been talking about, this is how you do it. This is how we do it. I know that's probably a bad, bad uh, song. I don't care. I'm redeeming it right now because this is how we do it, okay? Here is, he said, not neglecting to meet together. I know that's countercultural today, but that affects change. Now, here's where I'm going to probably, don't, I don't want to be misunderstood. I just have to tell you my heart. And hopefully you'll hear my heart. Whether you agree or not, just pray about it, and you will. But here's what I have sensed and seen, and I've been very quiet about it. But I have seen over and over that even all of us, th uh, those of us that are here, I am so understanding of people that are navigating COVID and doing their best and trying to get online and, and be there and stay there and get everything done right, but they're, tr they're trying to navigate through difficult things and they have risk. I am so understanding of that. But let me just say to those of us that 
we have come through some of that and we're in a different place. This is what I have seen. I have seen and watched that the people of God that come back to church, we don't have that accountability in place that we once did because now it's okay because everybody understands. It's an excuse. You know, we, we don't have to tell anybody. Not that this church has ever been a policeman. People don't have to tell us when they're not going to be. We don't demand anybody do anything like that. That's not our heart. We feel like when you get to go away, go away. Get away. Go, to, go and have a vacation. You're going to be the better for it when you can get out of town. That's wonderful and great. Those that have to work, we get it. It's not a problem. And again, see, I'm trying to explain the other side, and I can't. Here's the side that you need to know. Accountability is huge. Accountability is so huge that I can just tell you for myself, there's only been a couple times in my life in 44 years that I wanted to kill my husband until God he died, you know, a couple times. But you know why I don't do it? Yes, he's my accountability partner, and you know all the big reasons. But there are some practical reasons, too, because i got friends that I'm going to have to look in the face, and I'm going to have to tell them why. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference, ladies and gentlemen. Men and women, please understand that in your marriages. It makes a difference when you have accountability in your life. But here's what I found out. In us gathering together, because the Word of God says, look, even gather more than before because you know the day is approaching. If we don't know it now, when are we ever going to know it? When are we ever going to know that the times are here, that we're living in the last days? And this is what I have seen is the, those wonderful people, even myself, I, I'm, I'm preaching to myself, even those wonderful people that have come back and they're really on board, but it's so easy for us to not. It's just so easy to miss, like it's never been like that before. At least there was a little conscience that stood its head up and said, this is what you do. This is how you do it. You don't do that, but not anymore. That's been taken away. So I am, I am exposing that spirit because I know what the enemy, and I've exposed it to myself. There have been times if I wasn't who I was, I'd just want to stay home and watch on demand. That's, that's the deal. And the problem is people aren't watching on demand so much anymore. They'll tell you they're watching, but they're not really watching because they ain't got time to watch anymore. They got to go do what they got to do. I, I know, I know that. I, I'm, I know you're sucking wind. Go ahead and let your, it's going to be okay because I'm going to get off of this in a minute. But I can just tell you, I need to say this for my own benefit because I see where we are and I see trouble sometimes, not just now. There's still more to come. And I am not a prophet of doom and gloom. I am an incurable optimist, and God's going to give us grace. And the greatest days are just ahead. They always are. They come simultaneously. So, yes, there are rough days ahead. But there are greater days in God ahead than the rough days that we will, that we will see. I'm just sharing with you and hoping that somehow you will hear my heart. I have seen and know, and you and I know, if we talk private, that any accountability at all has been taken off the table. We have a reason now to do what we need to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, bless God. So it has been a revival of the flesh. That's what I've seen. But, God, now breathe. Do your lamas. It's okay because I'm going to make it all right. God's going to help us. We're going to get through this time. But this is the truth. This is the unadulterated truth. And my heart is convicted if I don't say something about it. We cannot neglect. Okay, 
I understand everybody. And we're even going to gather this week. And I hope people can sit up there if they need to. Sit over there if they need to. Sit over there. I don't care how far. We are socially distanced, but we're spiritually connected. And there is something about coming together. And he saw it. And this is what I see. There are four things that I'm going to end with out of this scripture that we need to know. This is not the time to pull back and pull away and neglect ourselves from seeing each other. And, being, and just recently, we were at a conference this past week, and, and a, a man of God said, you know, I just could not wait for y'all to get here. They have gone through hell and tarnation and beyond, and through is the operative word. They are going through, and they will get through. But he said, I couldn't wait. And I knew the feeling in my heart because I would say to some of my friends, I just, you know, I've been texting, but I called you today because I just want to hear your voice. There was something in the voice. There was a sound that I just wanted to connect with. Then it goes a little further. There's sometimes my mother had not been able to see her family in over a year, and and she kept begging, begging to go see them. We couldn't go, but I said, I'll do my best to bring them. And so the family came, and we had like 51 people show up at my house on a particular day. Don't put that on Facebook. They'll think I'm trying to promote COVID. But they were, we were outside, and we were gathered. And here's the thing. It wasn't so much what they said. It was just being. It's called communing. It's, there's a difference in communication and communing. Communication, we can do it on any level. And we can do it by on, online. We can do it by text. But, but communing, you can only do that when you're in the same place at the same time, gathered together. And somehow, he must have known this because he said that, look, we need to gather together and not neglect, neglect assembling together. We've talked about the church scattered, and the church has been, and will continue to be so, and will grow through it. But this is the church gathered. Continuous care to watching over one another. And he said, to assemble together as is the habit of some. The first thing we need in this hour for this scripture to come to being is discernment. We have to have discernment. We've got to know when the time is that, like the men in, in First Chronicles, the men of Issachar knew the times and the seasons. And Jesus, even in Luke, I believe it was, he would say, you know how to get the weather and to make the, how, uh, figure the weather out, but you need to know about the times you're living in. And that's where we are right now. God wants to give us discernment. So I want you to put your hand on your, on your head or somewhere close on your body and say, Lord, give me discerning. Give me discerning of spirits. Give me discernment that I may know where we are and when we're there and what to do in these times. Jesus himself knew hey, that it wasn't enough to interpret the weather, that they had to know the signs of the time. So we need discerning. The next thing we need is habits because he said, as some have formed the habit. And here's the deal. Habits make us, they break us. Habits are, you know, they're, they're the things that form us and they're the things that we form from them. So habits are great things that need to be established in our lives. They tell us that only 30 days you can create a habit. But I do want you to know it's much more difficult to reestablish a habit than it is to hang on to one in tough times. And one of the habits that you need to establish is, oh, Every week, I go to the house of God, if possible. If possible, I'm going to gather with the people of God. I may not, not get anything out of that sermon, but I'm just going to be. Just being. There's more caught than taught at times. We're going to be in the presence of God together. Their habits form. The third thing he said in, in this last uh, statement, not forsaken or neglecting or assembling together as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing, warning, urge, urging, and encouraging one another. Here's what you need to know. We need each other. 
We need each other. Oh, my goodness. I can't, can't even believe how badly we need each other. There's so many things happening around us, and statistics will have already started coming out and will only come out more. We have seen more suicides among believers in this time frame than we have in years and years put together. Pastor Mike was just speaking uh, this week, and he said four, and we need three of them personally. Four people in the last few weeks have committed suicide that are ministers. I'm telling you, these are times when people are giving up, and we have to hold fast to the faith. And sometimes it's just the encouraging of others. The encouragement from others equips us, and it stirs our gifts and activates our gifts, and something inside of us comes alive. It's iron, sharpening iron, but something inside of me comes comes alive and I realize there's something missing not because of who I am but because of whose I am and what he placed inside of each of us we need each other we need each other desperately during this time we need to be encouraged we need to be equipped and we need to be empowered for these last days we need to go forth from this place full of glory full of power full of anointing full of the, the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be the church that God's called us to. And lastly, we need hope. Eager to encourage and urge each other onward. As the word says, as we anticipate the downing of the new day. That dawning, what are we anticipating? The coming of our Lord Jesus. The coming of our Lord Jesus, the coming of our Lord Jesus is so near. It is so near, and I don't know any more to do than stand in the balconies and say, Hey, I urge you, please, I urge you to hold fast. Don't give up. There's somebody in here today that is about to take off. Your flight's about to go. I'm telling you, I sense that by the Spirit. So buckle your seatbelts. The, they're clearing the runway. You're going to get to fly like you've never flown. During this time, God is going to so impress and I and impart to us new glories, new strengths, new mercies, new revelation, new things are coming forth in this season. I don't want to miss one thing. I need it. I need it desperately. Hope is alive. Hope has got to stay alive. Hope is definitely the anchor. It's, you know, I, I have oftentimes learned to measure people's um, walk with, not necessarily their walk with God, but their stability in Christ by their ability to press and how hard they press. Because if you keep on pressing toward the mark of the high calling and you don't quit and you don't give up, that pressing has motion to it. You can't sit still. I'm not talking about be still and know that I'm God. You know that is a scripture that we believe in. I'm not talking about wait on the Lord and just sitting around on the front, uh, front porch in a rocking chair and waiting on the Lord. That's not what we're doing. That waiting on the Lord and growing stronger is an action word. It's actively looking for the enemy to pounce on him and destroy him. And I believe during this season, God is giving us such courage. Courage is the fulfillment of encouraging. To encourage means to give more courage to. To discourage is to take courage away. Are you stirring up so much that you're taking the courage away for somebody to move forward in their life. Oh, God, give us the grace. Give us the empowerment. Give us the, that zeal and that power for us to move into these days. These are perilous times. These are troublesome times. And, yes, the church has been asleep. Yes, we have. But God is waking us up little by little. And if I could, I would go and shake and say, wake up, wake up, wake up, my little aunt. She came in there and said, Wawaisa, that's my mother, Virginia. She said, Wawaisa has been asleep for hours and I can't get her up. She said, I shook her and shook her and shook her. And I said, well, she did take some night meds. <laughs> so maybe uh, there's still uh, 
activated somewhere. And I immediately saw a picture of the church. It's like we've taken so many things the world has to offer that it has deactivated us and we can't get ourselves up. And when we do kind of come up out of a slumber, it's so hard. And the older you get, it is so true. Have you ever tried to get up out of a recliner that's still reclined? You, you don't want to see that picture. I had to do it last night because it wouldn't go in. Then I had to push it in. Oh, my Jesus. It was bad news, and I'm hurting today from it. But I'm just saying, that is the picture sometimes of where we are. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this because then I wasn't even planning on it, but it just came to my spirit. I have shared with you so many times probably this exact story. We'll number it. This is number whatever of my stories. I'm a storyteller. But in the year of whenever it was, 2005, when we had a double whammy, I call it Katrina. Y'all remember that? That's Katrina and Rita together. I'm seeing some smiling faces. David Goyer still smiling over there. That's a man of God. <laughs> he can still smile through that. And we, uh, we had three different locations. They were in Orange County, and Pastor Kirk and Brenda were over there. I was in Beaumont doing what I could, and Pastor was here. And three different locations, we were fixing hot meals and giving out all kind of stuff. And uh, like over a 1,000 people every day, three meals a day on this property for over two weeks when no other church had come back yet. And our, our personal home, had taken quite a bit of damage on, and it was in, uninhabitable. And um, we were at Sister Clark's trailer. And isn't that strange that you can have a mobile home that's 50 years old? No, it wasn't 50, but close to it. And, uh, and then have a big, beautiful brick home, and it gets totally damaged badly, and the mobile home doesn't get a shingle off, you know. Y'all know what I'm talking about? We won't go into that message. But anyway, uh, I went to that. I, I left here, and it was so hot. It was just burning, sweating down hot during that time. And I went to that trailer, and it was fairly late. He was still here and probably going to be here most of the night. And I went there, and I thought that I was going to sit down and turn on the news and just kind of figure out what's going on around the world. I sat down to turn on the news, and this movie came on, Finding Nemo. Well, believe me or not, I did not hear an audible voice, but I did feel and sense the Spirit of the Lord keeping my hand right on that exact place because there was something in it he wanted me to see. Now, whether you believe that or not, I believe God can speak to you on the back of a cereal box, and he has for me before. If you're looking for Jesus, you'll find him in all the right places, just saying. So uh, I, I got some songs coming forth today. So anyway, I went and I sat there, and I left it on. I'm thinking, oh, God, this kid's movie. I have got to sit here and watch it. I could not care less about this. And I'm sitting there, and it's called Finding Nemo, and I found out real quickly in the story there were three main characters, Marlon and, of course, Nemo, and there was one that I was about to meet. Marlon was the father. Nemo had gotten out and about, and he was lost to his father. His father had already experienced great loss. Relate to this. He had experienced great loss already, so he was motivated by fear completely. So everything was, oh, my God, oh, Nemo's going to die. i got to find Nemo. He's going to die. It, it went quickly from Nemo's going to die before I find him to I'm going to die. And, uh, and so he did. But pretty soon, there's this little fish that swims up beside him called Dory. And I love Dory to this day because we need Dory's. And I hope, just stay looking right at me. Don't look to the left or the right. But I hope every one of you in here are, are every one of you is a Dory. And so... Dory comes along, and she gets up beside Marlon. He's saying, I'm going to die. I've lost this. I've lost that. And, I can't. and she said, no, 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 no. 
you're not going to die. We're going to find him. Come on, we're going to go look him, but we're going to find him. Isn't that just like somebody that is, you just want to slap them and say, go back to sleep? Right when you need to have a pity party, they come up and say, no, don't have a pity party. No, come on, go with me. We're going to get up and do some. Remember, <clears throat> there's something about moving. There's something about motion. There's something in the moving forward. So here he is. He goes, and he gets up, and Dory sticks right beside him. Way into the story, you know what happens. They get swallowed up by this big whale, and he is just for sure at that moment he's going to die. Oh, my God, now it's not just them. It's not just Nemo they're not going to find. He's going to die. And she said, no, no, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. I speak whale, and I love it. Because I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus everywhere I go. I know he knows the answer to everything. And if you speak Jesus, you've got the answer. If you can speak Jesus just quietly, he will show up on that pla- in that place at that moment. So Dory it goes, and, and before you know it, you know he's holding on to the very thing, the throat, the very thing that's keeping the water from leaving out, and she just realizes that, look, if that water came in, it's got to get out. So somehow she gets him to let go of that thing. And, boy, that's another message I like to preach. I wasn't even thinking about it, but I see it now. There's some things you need to let go of. We all need to let go of so that God can get us to the right place at the right time. And Tori just says, I speak well. Come on. Let go. And finally he lets go. And as you know, they're regurgitated and right to the very place where they were looking for Nemo. Because God has a way of getting us to the right place at the right time when Dories show up at the right place at the right time. So I'm calling the Dories up. I'm calling all the Dories to come alongside today because I believe with all my heart that this is a day to encourage, to equip to activate, to send out, to cause people to understand their gifting and calling more than ever. We need you, and we speak Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Can you stand with me right now? Father, I just thank you for every single person in this room. I thank you, Lord Jesus. That, Lord, we are capable of moving forward in this hour. You knew where we would be today. You knew exactly what we would be going through. And you still, even Paul, they wrote this scripture knowing what would happen. You knew. You inspired every scripture. So I thank you today, Lord, that people can come up beside and encourage and strengthen and cause those gifts to be stirred up and activated in the lives of people. And we trust you, Lord, that you are going to call those around us that need to pull up beside us to give us that word in due season that we can make it to that next place, that next opportunity, that next step. We just stay in the rhythm of your spirit. Let us stay in the rhythm of your spirit. We declare, Lord, that we will not look to the left or the right, but we will stay focused on you. We declare that this is our season and this is our time. And we will gather together and be thankful and grateful for the people of God that surpass, that surpass just one nation, just one color, just one party. But oh, together, Lord, for your kingdom's sake, we are here with one blood, your precious blood, Jesus, that is upon each of us. And we will fulfill the destiny of the church of the living God. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Father. Good morning, everyone. How many enjoyed the good word here today? Thank you, Pastor Renee. 
God bless you. You may be seated. If you're watching online, thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you next Sunday. Have a great week. God bless you.